Hey everybody, welcome to another exciting episode of the Grillless Kitchen. I've got some fantastic meals here for you today. Uh, we have an all-female episode here today. <laughs> Grill power, and strangely enough, that came for the meat. Here we go. We're talking big steaks. Hey guys, as a part of our global tour and our food adventure here around the world, I'm deciding I'm going to take you guys to Argentina today. We're going to do some steak. We're going to do a homemade chimichurri sauce. It's one of the things I really, really love. And we're going to pair it up with an Argentinian Malbec. We'll be right back with you. for meat? Yes! Always. Perfect. It's going to be fantastic. We've got some beautiful top sirloin steaks here. They are now getting to room temperature, which is where you want your meat to be. And uh, nobody likes it when it's cold. There's shrinkage involved. Said. That's right. <laughs> so we want to make sure that we're at a good room temperature. And we've got these babies here with our holy trinity of flavors for us, which is uh, salt, pepper, and garlic. And uh, we've got that rubbed in. Now what I am going to actually add is a little bit of robust olive oil from our friends and sponsor here at the Queen Creek Olive Mill. Fantastic. We're going to add a little bit of flavors in. Maybe we'll take a little consensus vote and maybe decide to change up the flavor, but uh, we'll go from there. Now, also, a little hat tip to our friends here at Oso Brewery and Distillery. Typically we'd be making a craft cocktail with them, but today we're going to Argentina. It's got to be Malbec. Sorry guys, no cocktails. We're going straight with the wine today. So it's going to be really good. Now, as a, one, of our, uh, one of the things that I'd like to make now uh, as an inspiration from uh, the Queen Creek Olive Mill, their family cookbook, is a fried asparagus. Now it's either a frite or a frite, depending on how you want to pronounce that, but it is a batter dipped and fried asparagus. And I've got a, a nice little flavor combination that's going to go into that batter for you. We're going to fry it up, it's going to get a little crispy, and I made a special sauce for you as well. You can drizzle over the top of that. It's going to be great, partial inspiration from my beautiful wife, and uh, you guys are going to love this. So hang tight with us. First things first, though, in the Gorilla's Kitchen, we got to get everybody a beverage. It's wine time, is it not? Yeah. Yes. Woo. All right. Well, no mixing or no, not shaken nor stirred. Uh, we're just going to go with poured, my favorite kind of wine. Everybody like, uh, like Malbec? Yes. yes. Perfect. I like that sound for some reason. We got a few bottles, so we'll see how this shakes out for everybody. So a little little wine hack for you guys, by the way. Your foil, you can just twist and pull. No reason to get a little foil cutter and do all that fanciness. We can do it that way. Yeah. People are trying everything they can to deal with that foil. You just got to grip it loosely and twist. Get everybody properly beveraged. Our grill is preheated. We're good to go there. Our oil's going. Now what I am gonna do is, I already have some of the chimichurri sauce that's ready to go, but I'm gonna show you guys how it's done. We're gonna make a little extra batch. Nothing wrong with having a little extra chimichurri laying around the house. So it's gonna go fantastic with the steak. And then I'll show you how we're gonna do the batter as well. We're gonna spend a little time together today. If that's all right. Yeah. I'm gonna show you how to make some great stuff. And we just hope the wine doesn't run out. I might know where to find one or two more bottles somewhere. <laughs> I might. I always say ladies first, but we can start anywhere today. That's great. <clears throat> Ooh, yeah. Thank you. Thank start you. here. And we're going to pass these along. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And cheers, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. Woo! All right, so let's talk chimichurri sauce. We know it's tangy, it's zesty, it's delicious, but what are our flavors? As we discovered, it's actually, we have a uh, little bit of onion. We've got parsley. Now, I happen to like curly parsley. I, I don't know, it's just got a lot of character to it. Looks interesting to me. We've got flat parsley, just in case anybody really has their particular flavor. Cilantro, we need that. We also have fresh oregano, not dried oregano. You wanna go with your fresh oregano this way. We have garlic. We're going to do minced garlic today instead of roasted garlic because I don't want to spend all day roasting garlic, even though it sounds like it's a fun and delicious endeavor. And a little bit of red wine vinegar for this also. Now, one of the other things with sneaking around here, 
jalapeno. You can use uh, jalapenos, you can use Anaheim chilies, uh, serrano peppers, whatever you like, whatever the heat and uh, flavor profile that you like with a chili. The jalapeno to me comes out best with everything. So I'm gonna be combining a little bit of the stuff together. We're gonna to pop it in the food processor and it'll magically be done when you guys come back. So here we're back. We're talking about our chimichurri sauce. Everything is chopped and ready to go. And uh, we've got our parsley, we've got our basil, we have our cilantro is ready to go. We have our jalapeno, don't seed it, leave it in there. The heat is actually essential for this. We've got the shallot, which just tastes a lot like a purple onion or smells like it. It's just a skinny little purple onion, apparently. Uh, but, uh, you know, they figure out it looks like a mutant uh, onion. We had to give it a different name. So, shallot, perfect. There we go. Uh, but that's where we're going. So we're gonna be adding these things in here. Now, I made a small batch of this last night. So I want you to actually see what the, what was the question? Um, I'm sorry to interrupt, but you, when you were listing the ingredients, mm -hmm. you had parsley and cilantro, and you said um, basil? Yeah. Oregano? Or it was oregano, sorry. Okay. Actually, it's fresh, fresh oregano. Okay. Yeah, so basil would be sure. wrong. That would be wrong. That wouldn't be right you, at all. It's, it's oregano, it's parsley, fresh oregano. parsley, cilantro, cilantro, cilantro. Shallots. shallots, garlic, garlic jalapenos. jalapenos, salt, red wine vinegar, and olive oil. How much of each thing? Oh. About a cup. <laughs> I'm doing one jalapeno. You could actually add two, three, whatever your heat level actually is for you. But uh, one, it was kind of a large shallot. I think it's, it's fine uh, for that. And then we are looking at uh, two tablespoons of your red wine vinegar. And it calls for about a uh, half a cup of uh, olive oil. Now, I've decided I'm going to change up the flavor just a little bit on this one. We're going to be going with a robust olive oil. It's one of my absolute favorites. Uh, from our friends here at the Queen Creek Olive Mill. Also, I'm going to add in a little more citrus to this. And I'm going to add in a little bit of the Meyer lemon olive oil also, because it's got a really good, really good citrus note to it. It's fantastic. And I'll pass it around if anybody wants to, but I want you to go ahead and check this out. This is the finished product that I did as a small batch last night. If you like basil, can you oh, add wow. basil? You sure, yeah, you could add whatever type of other herb that you want to. It's tangy, a little bit zippy but it pairs really, really well. Okay. Goes great. You can use this on chicken, fish, really good. It would go really good on, on salmon. It would be fantastic. What's the difference between like a chimichurri and a pesto? Like it's kind of pesto-ish, right? Kind of, yeah. but pesto is pine nuts and, uh, and basil. Okay. So they look really yeah, similar, but a little bit yeah. Of the same base. And a lot of olive oil, yeah. Uh, Texture-wise, they're gonna be identical, okay. really, because of how it breaks down. The pine nuts are gonna be a little bit different. But you can actually see it when you catch it in the camera here. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to be similar, but yeah, the flavors are, are definitely different. Pesto also has, it sometimes has like cheese, like a Parmesan. Oh, yeah, yeah, you can do Parmesan yeah. in there, yeah, yeah as well. A little more fragrant, yeah. Right? yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely good. So I'm going to add some of these things into the food processor. We'll get this together, and then we'll just add it into the batch. It'll be really nice. Not Meanwhile, black pepper? Black, pepper, black pepper, white pepper, <laughs> salt. Garlic. We will have that. We're going to go with a little bit of ground cayenne. Nice. Ooh, yeah. It's kind of heated up. So you did four eggs. Four eggs. A cup of almond butter. A cup. I actually did like a <laughs> cup and a fourth and a probably. Fourth. Just yeah. the, okay. You know, you can't really control what the size of the eggs are going to be. It did do a half a cup of, uh, I actually did half and half. Sometimes they call ah. for milk, so I just went with a half and half instead. Okay. I was either that or heavy whipping cream I'm with a half and half. So we're going to do a little bit of cayenne. Smoked paprika, garlic powder. That looks like it probably equals about an eighth of a teaspoon of cayenne. Just an eighth of a teaspoon. No, that's probably a, a close, closer to it, uh, maybe a, a tablespoon probably in there. Oh, no, no. I, Any good chef no. Eyes. Yeah, we're going to eyeball this. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no. A little garlic powder. There we go. A little bit more. We're going to go with our smoked paprika. This has no heat, but it has a great smell. Yeah. You can but smell that, be careful. Yeah, Don't get it right. too close to the schnoz yeah. while you're... Oh, that's so good. Oh, yeah. Smell and something else I added to it that I really, really liked yeah. is turmeric. Oh. Oh. It's a great it's color, good. great it's smell. Good. Go. It's better than like the refill from Sprouts and then put it in a little uh -huh. bag. And all these 
spices are going in the batter. In the batter for the asparagus. Oh, my Lord. It's going to be terrible. Yeah, this is going to be awful. Nobody's going to like it at all. I like it. Can you use this, this um, batter to do, like, your jalapenos in the I, Yeah, you could do jalapenos. I was actually thinking about doing maybe some maybe tilapia. Or I was just going to say, oh, yeah. 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 Mozzarella sticks. Mozzarella sticks. That oh, could be good. Wow, yeah. You're going keto. Could freeze some cheese sticks, yeah. dip it in this, and you can make a really good banana bread from all of here. Like banana bread. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Avoid all those other. If anybody wants to get a picture of that, you're more than welcome to do so. By the way, all these wonderful things happening. It's never rude to pull out your phone here. And Ross said almond meal. You know, banana. All right. And the almond flour. Where did you get that? Costco. Okay. So. Batter there. And does that need to sit for a few moments? Not really. Everything's kind of coming together. We're going to get our asparagus. has actually been cleaned and washed and we're ready to go. Make sure it's dry, though, before you start dipping in the batter. Because once any water hits that oil, no way no. It's going to start getting very excited. And not in a good way. Let me sure he's looking beautiful. Look at that. All right, so I'm going to be taking these steaks out on the grill. We're going to be cooking these babies while we're letting everything sit and the flavors come together for that. Okay. So we are off the grill. Are you ready for this beautiful? Off the grill or off the grill? Look at that. Look at that. Gorgeous. They only love me for my meat. So it is. I've been loved less for less reasons. So what do we got to do with this? Well, you know, what we got to do before we let this rest officially? I know what we got to do. <laughs> there is butter. This is melted butter and garlic. We've got to put over the top of these. I love that smell. You missed the spot. No, I didn't. Right here. It'll get there eventually, I promise. <laughs> all right. All this beautiful char is actually going to go ahead and soak all of this butter and garlic in. We don't want to leave any of it in the pan. No. What kind of steak did you use? These are actually top sirloin. Actually, these are from Costco. Um, really nice cuts, though. Beautiful marbling in these. Turned out really well. I had to do very little trimming at all uh, with these the way I want it. There we go. Yes. Now, while. Uh, Time is precious. It smells so good mm. because I love that smell. Yes. Mm. 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 I'm going to cover yeah. these. Mm -hmm. We made sure these got to a core temperature 140 degrees. So we know that they're going to be a nice medium to a nice medium rare. So there we go. This is going to sit. We're going to let it rest for 10 minutes. I never Best knew this about my brother. Oh, he is so OCD. <laughs> Well, I knew a little bit of that. And yeah. it comes with sensory. So they're making sure. the twine together with me. It might be opposite yeah. of OCD. So, yeah, here we go. It's going into the... Can you put your right hand in there? No. <laughs> <laughs> no because yeah, I could. Be... <laughs> I'm not gonna. No. Totally could. <laughs> so, what's in the batter? The batter is almond flour. Okay. It is eggs. It is half and half. Yes. Okay. It is... Uh, salt, pepper, garlic, white pepper, paprika, cayenne, turmeric, and uh, who knows? I think that's about it. Remember a while ago when we all smelled the paprika? Oh, no, I'm yeah. taking the batteries. I smelled paprika, absolutely. Yeah. But, but you know, that's 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 all right. They don't remember. They're like, oh. And then you're, oh, you're frying in peanut oil? oil? Frying in peanut oil because right. it has the highest flash point. Oh. So it's very tolerant. And this is off keto, right? All keto. All keto. Oh, keto. Oh, those are beautiful. They oh, look. They smell so good. You yeah. are the yeah. man. Do we get to try it now, or do we have to wait? Well, when it cools off a little bit, I mean, oh, it just. I think they're cool enough. That looks really good. It smells really good. That's all you get. You know, it's more than you want. This is what you're here for? Yeah, yeah this one you get. Oh, my God. Let's try it. Let's stop. I had this Oh, my God. Oh my God. <laughs> so good. It's so good. But baby, this is like 
better? This is way better asparagus yeah. I've ever had. It's pretty tasty it's stuff, right? Kind of sauce oh, that's delicious. Right. Oh, there's mm -hmm. sauce? Oh, oh there's, yeah. there's some sauce over here for oh, you. Oh, I forgot about sauce. Oh, wow. Come on. I always got the sauce. Oh, my gosh. All right, before you, uh, this is so, okay, before you, okay, before you, what is in this? okay, yeah. so this is actually, this is a great little sauce we got oh. cooking here. So, real, yeah. real yeah. simple. This actually is uh, based go. off of the sauce that I used for our keto chicken and waffles. Okay, it is sugar-free syrup. Yes. Okay. What it else? is what? Frank's Red Hot. Ooh. And spicy brown mustard. Yes. And then I combined it with mayo to make an aioli for it. Oh. Now, that may sound really freaking strange. It is but I'm going to pass this around. Go ahead and pop some of that on your plate and let me know what you think of that flavor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't like asparagus, you will love it, right? With this breading and that sauce. The breading turns out pretty good? Yeah. You taste all the things, all the flavors? Everything. Oh, my gosh. So good. Now, in the Quinkwick Olive Mill cookbook, this is actually in there. But it only says to season with salt and pepper. I kind of take it to the that's next level. Sin. That's how it's got to be done. Mm -hmm. You need more flavors in there. Yeah. Smoked paprika, that's one of my... Yeah. Yeah. I use that I a lot. That, that, that comes through okay in the, in the batter? Yeah. yeah, I like that. Oh, it's so good. Throw things together. That was worth waiting for. It was. That, that was really good. Dave might have made a mistake by inviting me. I had to hear it like every week, every other week. <laughs> 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 Just knocking on the door. What are you cooking today? Hey. We're not even filming. <laughs> I don't care. Cook me something. She didn't say, what are you filming? She said, right. what are you putting in? That's, that's my line. Right? You drove the you drove <laughs> <laughs> It's town. What are you here? cooking, baby? Yes. Yes. Yeah. The batter for the asparagus has the smoked paprika and how much garlic? As much as you want. That's a good I had to ask a question. Probably about... Three tablespoons, probably. Okay. At least two. Good. At least two. Okay. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut these here, and we're gonna see how these turned out. All right. Now we're dealing with the different varying thicknesses, so it's kind of a pain in the ass to get these to the right same temperature. Different but varying yes. She said. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> so I've been told. <clears throat> I'm tolerant. Uh. Just saying. For thickness. Holy <laughs> vey. <laughs> Kegels. Makes us all feel better. That's all I'm saying. Anyway, so back to the show at hand. Oh, we love how you handle that meat. Oh. You know, I prefer how you handle it better, to be honest. Oh. <laughs> nice. I did it by myself for so many years, I appreciate it. <laughs> Just someone else in the room every once in a while is always nice. <laughs> this is. Uh, <laughs> it's something. <laughs> it's something. It's something. So, can you explain a little bit about how to cut a steak? Here's the deal you want to look for where the grain of the meat is. And how do you know this? Well, it's very confusing to me. When you look at how, how the meat goes, you'll see okay. the, how the fibers actually run. You, what you want to do is you want to cut against that. So you cut it, what they call, you on the bias. bias. Mm -hmm. I mean, they fiance fans will get well. <laughs> cut it on the bias. But if you can't figure it out, all you got to do is just yeah, cut it one time. And see right here? If it's wrong. Mm -hmm. See how the fibers are this way? Yeah. The fibers are running so this way? You want to cut this way. Okay. Okay. Sort of Not a really very expensive, you know, <laughs> cut of meat at all. Uh, yeah, but if you marinate it properly. Marinate it properly. You season it properly. Yeah. Usually it's grill it properly. Treat it well. Don't they usually like treat it well? Traditional recipes use like a flank steak. Pardon? Yeah. Traditional recipes use like a flank steak with yeah. more cheap meat. Absolutely. Still, right? Mm -hmm. Marinate it for a while. That is cooked perfectly. Mm. It is cooked perfectly. It's a nice good medium. Just the you need to get it up to 135 to 40 to 140 mm -hmm. degrees. Now That's where you want it to be. Is 140 is medium. 135. If you pull it at 135 to 140 and let it rest, yeah. it'll finish its thing. But, yeah. but and then the garlic right. and butter. See what happens is the char on the outside. That's why you put the garlic and butter because it actually soaks up. Yep. The char soaks up the, the butter and the garlic for you. 
And then, so I'm going to start uh, plating here really quick. Do this, man. Is that one of those Meissen? Is that how you say it? Meissen? 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 Yeah. Knives? Makes me feel yes. like he's going to yes. kill himself okay. with it. Yeah. <laughs> Jane? Be home. Uh, be home. I'm going to recognize it as I'm not sure oh, did you yeah. I'm going to do that really quick, yeah. and then let me give you some asparagus. Oh, God bless. So those are actually, like, I should have worn them last night. It's amazing. Is it amazing? Because yeah. I, I had one off of um, Amazon's Treasure Truck or some of those things. It is, yes. And, but it, it rusted. See how that is the story? That one does not. What about her sauce? Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, here you go. Actually, oh. go ahead and lift your plate over here for just yeah, a second. Sorry, sir. I don't mean to play with you. But it's fun to tell me what to do. There you go. <laughs> don't forget to call. There you go. Oh, God. Really? You got it. Okay. Oh, you want the sauce? Sauce. Put it on your spur. Yeah. Happy? Yes. Very. Wow. Thank you, Jeremy. Nice You're very, very nice. welcome. Wow. Make sure we get uh, photos along the way. Mm -hmm. If you can actually pull yourself away for just a moment even mm -hmm. during those bites. But don't forget to uh, get some photos and post these puppies. All right, guys. Can we see that? Oh, oh good, good job. Right for all that. <laughs> <laughs> it's juicy. Here we go, Internet fan. There you go. What do you think, guys? So good. Beautiful. Cheers to Argentina. Cheers to Chimichurri. Cheers to Malbec. And cheers to our friends and our family here and all you guys at home. Thank you so much for being here for another exciting episode of the Gorilla's Kitchen. We got our wonderful steak, our chimichurri sauce. We've got our Malbec. We've got our fried asparagus. Lots of great flavors. Lots of batter. I know it's really confusing. Lots of things that go into this recipe. I promise. It'll be out there for you guys. You'll be able to duplicate this. Try it at home. Let us know what you think. I'd love to have the feedback. It's really important that we get this with you guys. So stick with us. Every Thursday we're going to have a new episode for you. Unless we run into technical difficulties, things happen. It's life, but we're going to get it out every week that we can for you. Stick with us. Follow us on Instagram for more daily con content. You'll see uh, things pretty much every day or every other day from us there. Uh, we'd love to connect with you guys and message back and forth. And I want to hear what's going on. Uh, stay tuned with us for our development this year of winning the food game. We're going to help folks that have food allergies with their family and their friends overcome some of their difficulties. So we need community input there. We want to hear what you guys' struggles are and help you overcome those without sacrificing flavor. It's a big thing. So it's our passion in life is to feed you guys and make you live uh, a more full and happy life and, and enjoy your experiences a lot more. So from all of us to all of you at the Gorilla's Kitchen, we love you guys. We'll catch you next week. Thank you. Woo! Woo!